Saltburn is out, so it's time Mark told us about it. New film by uh, Emerald Fennell, who made A Promising Young Woman, and as you say, guest on last week's show. Um, like its predecessor, it is a darkly satirical black comedy with shades of horror. Erotic um, comedy. Yeah, that's that's right. That's the phrase it's used, wasn't it? Um, I would say that the 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 one line thing would be Bride's Head Revisited meets Fall of the House of Usher via the talented Mr. Ripley. So Barry Killen. Barry Killen. <laughs> <laughs> I said I actually I did ask him and he did anyway, So Barry Keegan is um Oliver Quinn. Actually, there, were, there were people who who were on social media were saying you got that wrong. As in me saying it wrong. And actually, but if you go and I felt like getting involved and then remembered that you never get involved. Yeah. If you if you Google something like Barry Keegan saying his own name, that's what it comes up as. And he and that is him saying his name. Yes. So if you think it's different, well, bring as, it up with as him. I, as I said, I asked him how you pronounce it. And he said, well, technically it's Keegan. He said, but everyone, including me, says Keegan. Like so Keegan so, it is. So right. there we go. Uh, Oliver Quick, new student at Oxford who does not fit in with the poshos like Jacob Elordi's Felix. Um, he's shunned, he's sneered at because unlike them, he's, uh, he's from the north. He's from uh, Merseyside. Uh, he's worked really hard to get into Oxford. He turns up wearing a shirt and tie when they're all wearing kind of, you know, uh, posh cats, you know, just like, oh, this is something I've thrown on. And in his very first uh, tutorial, to which he turns up completely on time while his fellow student doesn't, his tutor is astonished that he's actually read the reading list. He's not meant to read it. It's just suggestions. He's read everything. He's read <laughs> everything. He's read the whole week reading list. He longs to be part of the poshos group, as it is at the beginning. He's completely shunned by them because he because they're trying too hard. But he gets an in after Felix gets a puncture, and he cycles by, and he offers to take Felix's bike to let Felix have his bike. Felix kind of thinks he's a you know he's a he's a funny thing to pick up, and he's won over by tales of what a hard life. Oliver has had, his abusive father, his alcoholic mother. And Felix, who's sort of, you know, oh, it's, my, it's my new interesting friend, you know, how fabulous, invites him back to his home, Saltburn, for, you know, for some of that. Here's a clip. I'm glad you're here, mate. Right, I will, uh, I will leave you to it. Uh, just one thing, mum has a phobia of uh, beards and stubble, so I left a, a razor for you in the bathroom. Huh? Yeah, I don't know. She thinks it's unhygienic, uh, something to do with her father. It's, it's bonkers. I mean, I'm not even allowed to wear my stud when I'm here. Anything else I should know about? No, no, just be yourself. They'll love you. It, it's relaxed, I promise. We'll be in the library. Library? I think that's such a great line. We'll be in the library. Library. So also there in the house are Felix's mum and dad, Elspeth and James, played by Rosamond, don't call me Rebecca Pike, and Richard E. Grant. <laughs> don't. <laughs> <It's> Rebecca Pike. <laughs> well, you worked with a Rebecca Pike. I know. Um, yeah, and me and uh, on stage with me are both Kevin and Andrew McDonald. Um, Sister Venetia, um, by, played by uh, Alison Oliver, and his cousin Farley, played by Archie McDequay, who the family have taken under their wing for reasons which are, are explained. Also present is poor dear Pamela, who is uh, Kerry Mulligan, who of course was the star of uh, Promising Young Woman, who appears to have outstayed her welcome. At first, the family view Oliver as a kind of exotic oddity. Oh, you know, God, was he, he's from the north. At one point it says, you know, Liverpool, where is that? She says, I think it's in the sea. <laughs> but he's from the north. And, um, you know, so he'll be played with and, and enjoyed for a while and then presumably later disposed of. But gradually, as the drama progresses, it becomes clear that he is not quite as shy and retiring as he seems, that in fact, he has seen what he wants in the world and he will do anything to sort of seduce his way into the family, person by person, and, be, you know, worm his way into the heart of Saltburn. I mean, the very name Saltburn kind of tells you something about the tone of the film, because I think the tone of the film is, I hadn't heard the word Saltburn before. So it's very arch. The performances are acerbic. I think Pike's Elspeth is brilliantly cracked. She has that kind of glint of madness in her eye that she showed in well films like you know like Gone Girl, and she's you know she does she does smile in a way that says smile. I have something very very 
off kilter. They're all, but you said, I think, at the beginning of the interview with Emerald Fennell, I, I liked your film, I hated all the people. I did, I did. I, I shouldn't really have said that so early in the no, interview. No, I, I think you're think. absolutely right because the scenes at the beginning when he's at Oxford, these entitled half wits who all, yeah, all right, you know, because it's like the thing about there's nothing I find more annoying than posh people swearing loudly on trains because they've got the right to do it. And it is, that is who they are. But at the centre of it is Barry Keoghan's quietly watchful presence. And it's it's mercurial in as much as it, there is so much going on in his performance. I mean, he is a he's such a brilliant actor because he changes with each with each film. So I mean, whether it's Calm with Horses or Killing of a Sacred Deer or Banshees of Inisherin or this, he looks like a different person in every film. He combines sweetness with menace he's got a way of looking that m might be bashful but might also be sinister there's a symphony of stuff going on in his face and we see a lot of his face because and again you raised this in the interview they've shot in four by three they've shot in academy ratio because that ratio is perfect for faces it's perfect for houses it's perfect for proscenium arches of which there are many in the film the idea of theater and performance and I think great work uh, by Lina Sangrid, who's the DP, and Emerald Fennell in going, this is the shape of the film. This is the shape that this film needs to be. I think the production design was terrific as well. I liked the, the I liked the fact that there is an there is an admirable level of wow, they went there. You know, there's a couple there's a couple of scenes in the film that that, that you know they were they were like, you know, particularly the scenes I'm talking about. I do. That you're like, oh, okay, they, they went there. And personally, I preferred this to... Barry, just get a glass of water. <laughs> That's what I'm thinking. <laughs> See the film, that makes sense. Personally, I preferred it to Promising Young Woman, which I liked very much, but I think that... No, okay, no, I'm not saying you have to agree. We can have a discussion about it. I think Promising Young Woman is really, is really promising, but I also think that at times the, it doesn't quite gel. In the case of this, I thought it was completely of a piece. <clears throat> I mean, and as somebody who loves Fall of the House of Usher, and I, it, it's a gothic melodrama, isn't it? It's a gothic, gothic, gothic erotic thriller melodrama is what it is. And I thought tonally this was more, uh, it felt more more advanced it felt like like she's grown into this film because what you don't want after promising young woman is a mm. and i thought this was a step up you, but, but you can disagree i thought well here we go this is an email you're from, allowed to disagree yes i am i, I am indeed um nigel and Catherine okay. writing from rugby dear charles Ryder and sebastian flight it was fine barry keegan is masterful richard emergency grant joyfully swallows whole every scene he appears in and it looks very handsome, occasionally too handsome. One particular montage seemed destined to end with a voiceover, voiceover saying, Saltburn by Calvin Klein. <laughs> but discussing on the walk home, we both found it was an entertaining watch that didn't say anything. Perhaps that was the point. It unexpectedly romped past the Six Laugh Test early on. But given the pedigree, I think we were expecting something with a solid theme or subtext, rather than Mr. Ripley revisits Brideshead with a Scooby-Doo Tales of the Unexpected Third Act. Should there Ooh. be a separate scoring system for films that are only disappointing because the director's previous was so incredible. Tiggity Tonk, very much up with odious liars being unable to afford paying damages by claiming bankruptcy. Nigel and Catherine, thank you very much. And I, th I think I enjoyed it less than Promising Young Woman, definitely. Okay. I, I thought Promising Young Woman was quite exceptional um, and enjoyed it from start to finish. And maybe it was because I had this visceral reaction to how loathsome um, everybody was that um, I enjoyed it a But lot as less. we have discussed many times, a film can be entirely enjoyable even if the people in it are utterly horrible. I mean, to me, this is a vampire movie in which everyone is a vampire. And I mean, everyone mm -hmm. is a vampire. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. In fact, vampires come from everywhere, Mark. They do. But they're largely Transylvania. No, but some of them come from private school and some of them come from public school. Private, yes. uh, state school. I know it's one of those weird things, isn't it? The public way, and private. The, 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 but the way, why do we call private schools public schools? There is, there is certainly kind of... So remind me, says a visitor from America... A private school is the same as a public school. Yes, that's right. That's right. Yes, exactly. L can't... Literally, the two words mean computer. I mean, the, the vampire thing is quite clearly flagged up, as I think is the you know is 
is is the gothic. I mean, even in in the lettering and 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 the way. So, did you not think that from a from a production point of view, it was coherently of a piece in a way which is really impressive? Uh, yes, I just enjoyed okay. it a lot less than Promising Young Woman. But did you enjoy it a lot less than Promising Young Woman because there was no one that you could? Who knows? I mean, who knows? But I just, I just, I thought it was okay. Um, well, we, you know, I don't want to see another stately home. I just don't want to see another state. I don't want to see. Uh, it, Emerald, oh, Emerald Fennell says one of her favorite genres is something funny has happened in a stately okay, home, yeah, yeah. and I absolutely never want. To, if I never see a, another but, stately home, but you from, like Knives Out. Yes, but it's that's, that's a, a stately home. But that's a, that's just a Mickey take all the way through, isn't it? That's but didn't a, you think this is this is basically saying the stately home is a vampire trap? No, they're I, all cannibals. I hadn't. I mean, clearly, I hadn't gone to the cannibal analogy. Maybe that happens. It, it is, but the vampire analogy is not. I mean, it's like it's writ large. I mean, it's there in one particular scene. It's writ particularly large. Thanks very much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed watching it as much as we enjoyed making it. While you're here, check out all the other videos because they're cool too, aren't they? They are. And if you want to keep up to date with everything Kermit and Mayo's take, then check out our social channels. I mean, why wouldn't you? I mean, I, I would. I have done. Excellent.